Hello everybody, my name is Cameron Brown and all welcome to the How to Cameron channel and welcome to a new epic video. Today I want to talk about some funny things about university and that's really it. Okay, I don't know how this video is going to go but I, I feel like a lot of people, you know, enjoy videos uh, that I make in which I talk about university. Uh, a university vlogger, that is me, Papa Cameron. Before this video starts, if you guys enjoy it, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new today. Follow me on Instagram, I lost some followers because of a controversial video I made on some people from my old sixth form. You guys have to follow me, I have to hit a thousand followers, please. Guys, I want that clout in it. Obviously, I did not take A-level maths. Uh, I kind of wish I did, but I didn't, and there's nothing I can really do about it. But because of that, I have to do a math toolkit class. Now, at Nottingham, at the Uni of Nottingham, if you have taken an A-level in maths, if you have an A-level grade, you're put into a harder type of maths. And a lot of people who are obviously on that course are way better at maths, hence don't need to go through the basics of maths. Now, I'm not bad at maths. 100% I am not bad at maths. I have quite a mathematical brain. I like to use formulas and I'm quite good at memorizing things. So maths is not a weak point for me. Something has annoyed me about these math toolkit lessons. Even though they're meant to go through the basics of maths, something that I've noticed is the lecturer, I feel like he treats the lecture more as a maths class rather than chemistry students learning maths. Obviously, fundamentally, it is a maths class, but he's lecturing it as if he wants to interest the students. Like, he would go on about the history of trigonometry when the function sine theta was invented. And I'm just there thinking to myself, why do we need to know this? Oh, who invented it? Where he was from? Well, I didn't even know India made other things besides curry back in the 12th century or whatever. So that was quite surprising to me. It wasn't even in the 12th century. I didn't remember it because it means nothing to me. And that was racist crap. But yeah, he would just go through very pedantic things. He'll give you like lots of trick questions about maths. And the way that you can get around these trick questions is by being a complete nerd, to be honest. A lot of these questions, a lot of these trick questions he's been asking, you know, you'll only know the actual answer to these questions if you know the subject inside and out. Like if you know everything about trick, you're going to be able to find the answers even if you're given trick answers to choose from. Something that I noticed is almost everyone in the class is just confused most of the lesson because the content for maths and chemistry is not too hard. When it comes to the questions, I can do them. But I feel like with the lecturer, he goes out of his way to make custom questions. And these custom questions are just not similar to the questions we actually need to know how to answer. They're just really confusing, really badly worded, and they're too focused on not maths, but more the history of maths. And I, I feel like with, the, with these lectures, I'm just learning random things about logs. Oh great, logs were invented a long time ago and he gave a date. Oh, he asked the class, who invented logarithms? Like, who cares? Like, wh why was he teaching us that? He mentioned how there's like 12, I think, functions for like trigonometry. You don't need to know that if you're a chemist. And then he went through like the different types and there's got them 12, maybe more. So it's just a massive waste of time effectively. But something that I've noticed is there's this guy in the toolkit class and he is such a nerd. He literally knows the answer to all these math questions. He knows the history to maths. He knew what, uh, what, the, what were the numbers called? He knew what imaginary numbers were. Even I know what imaginary numbers are. But I said it quietly, so he said it uh, louder than me and he got the credit for it. What the flip, man? I'm still annoyed by that. But effectively, he knows his maths inside and out. And he's trying to, like, brag in front of everyone. The lecturer will ask a question and this small five foot three guy, man, he'll put his hand up instantly and quote the answer, even though it's such an obscure question. Like, it's a question that you don't need to know the answer to if you're a chemistry student. Yes, if you're going to do a degree in maths, you should know how to not fall for trick answers in terms of like multiple choice questions. But if you're a chemist student, when are you ever gonna be in the situation in which the question paper is gonna require you to have a knowledge of how to identify a trick answer or answer a trick question? Like that seems so ridiculous. Like it just seems so stupid, but pretty much this kid put his hand up to everything. No one else will know the answer bar this one little kid. And I'm just thinking to myself, what are you doing here? Like he clearly takes pride in being able to answer all the answers, which which is fine. But you've got to realize though that this is a toolkit. 
in chemistry. No one here has done A-level maths. But this guy apparently has not done A-level maths either. But, oh, he knows the answer to flipping everything. Okay, fantastic. He's always sitting there with his Luke Sade energy. He's just a moron. He's the epitome of a virgin. And he, I don't know what it is. He has long hair and it flipping annoys me so much. Okay, he has a good hairline as well, which makes me even angrier. But God, does this guy annoy me. He's like a little kid. I don't even know how he's doing the course right. I need to, I need to stop being mean. I'm being so mean to this guy. <laughs> I'm literally criticising someone for being smart. But that's not the issue, okay? Maybe it is on the surface of it, but it's more about how he answers questions. Like, the lecturer will go, oh, does anyone know the answer besides you? Yet yeah, he'll put his hand up anyway, even though the lecturer said besides him. And then when he answers it, he'll answer it really cocky. And then he'll ask about really confusing things. Like, why is he even in the toolkit? Like, most people who are in this math toolkit lecture are just people who like chemistry, don't care about maths, just want to learn the basics of maths. And then you have this lecturer talking about the history of trigonometry and logarithmic functions. And then the lecturer goes on to ask trick questions or questions about the history of certain math concepts, which clearly are not at the same level as what we actually need to know by looking at the workshop questions, like questions we actually need to know the answer to. And then you have this smart ass with his Lucas Hay going, I know the answer, it's <laughs> Like, he's just a massive virgin and it makes me really sad. So the next thing that's been happening to me at uni is the goddamn bus. Obviously, I commute to uni to and fro. When it's rush hour, when I have to get there for 10, or when I'm going back after, at 4 p.m., which is normally after the toolkit lecture. Fantastic. And the funny thing is, these toolkit lectures for me are pointless to go to because literally they, they just involve this lecturer asking ridiculously confusing questions, which we just don't need to know as per the workshop questions. Because the workshop questions are effectively the questions that you need to know how to answer. And they're about tenfold easier. Ugh, it's so annoying. So there's not even any point in me turning up, but I turn up anyway because I'm a good student, right? And then when I leave, the traffic's absurd. And when it's rush hour and I'm commuting, it can take anywhere up to two goddamn hours. When I go to uni, when I go to Nottingham, it's easy. It's an easy commute. It's so amazing. Even when traffic's bad, it's quite comfortable. I never really miss the bus. But oh my god. When I leave uni, though, it is always terrible. I go on this uh, bus service, which only calls at, like, two stops. And once it's called at the stop I need to get on at, it doesn't stop again until it goes to Derby. So effectively, I have to get on at that one stop. Well, for me to get to that one stop, I need to walk about four minutes adjacent to the road it drives down, which pretty much means every time I leave uni and I walk to this bus stop, for four minutes, if this bus drives past, I have to wait between six and 10 minutes for the next bus. Every single time I leave uni and go on that goddamn bus, Every time, right at the end, one minute before I'm about to hit the bus stop, I see the bus drive past. Or, even worse, I turn around the corner and I see the bus. And because the bus is every 10 minutes, if I see the bus and I'm one minute away from the bus stop, I have to wait eight, nine minutes, effectively. What's more annoying is the buses at 4 p.m. are normally goddamn full. So, not only do I see the bus drive past, I just think to myself, oh, rats. But also, at four, they're not even every 10 minutes, they're every 12 minutes, I believe, and they're late every time without fail because of traffic. But on top of that, you also have to wait for the bus, and then some of them are full, so they just drive straight past. And I am so flipping sick and tired of, miss, of missing the bus just because it's full. The bus always turns up, I've been waiting for the bus for 20 minutes, like yesterday. I waited for the bus 20 minutes. I was the first in goddamn line. This woman has a kid, so she gets the two spaces. You know, that's okay. The next bus turns up. There's like four of these pricks that come from Nottingham Uni. They're all Asian. I'm not racist or anything, but the, these four people who... I don't think they knew English, to be fair, so maybe I can't criticise them without being racist. But, you know, they come over. They come from the uni. They go in front of me. They're four foot tall. I don't even see them. And by the time I'm trying to get on the bus, a bus is full. And I'm like, how? And he, he points towards these four midgets who all went on the bus before me and, and I didn't even know how they got there, which flipping aggravated me so much. And then after that, oh my God, I get on the bus. Okay, I get on the third bus. I've waited 40 goddamn minutes in the cold and darkness. And I finally get on the bus and I sit on a really awkward seat next to this guy who's jamming some really loud tunes. And there's a seat next to me, which I also could have chosen to sit, but I've chosen this seat over that. It's like a table seat on a bus, but there's no table. I know, fantastic. So you're sitting opposite each other. And there was one seat 
uh, that was forward facing, uh, but it was the aisle seat. All of the other three seats were taken, so the backward facing seats, both of them were taken, and the right forward facing seat was also taken. So there's one seat left, but it's opposite this girl. This girl, you know, she's just sitting there. I think she's a bit relieved that I chose to sit on a different seat rather than get opposite her, because obviously she was enjoying the extra leg room. And she says in the most snide way, oh, I hope no other people get on this bus because my legs are too long and I don't want anyone to sit opposite me. And she was so snide about it. And I was so flipping pissed off because the girl who was behind me had also waited 40 goddamn minutes for this shitty bus. Okay, and this girl who got in, uh, got on the bus at the start of the bus route, because it only stops at two places, obviously it starts at the first place, and then it stops halfway, and then it goes to Derby, and I'm at the halfway stop. She got on this bus without any issue, because obviously the bus wasn't full. It's not like she would have missed this bus. She was guaranteed to get on this bus. And then you have me and this uni student who've been waiting 40 minutes outside. If she had to wait at the Nottingham bus stop, it's inside, it's warm, so it's easy to wait at. And on top of that, she made the first bus because obviously this bus wasn't full and I, neither was the first bus before this. The, the bus before that also had a seat, so it's not like she would have missed that bus just to make this bus. I'm just there thinking to myself, you got on this bus seamlessly. Shut up. Like, her saying that just aggravated me so much. You are literally in the most horrible way saying, oh, I don't know what she's next to me. My legs are too long. I don't have any time for other people's shit. And I'm just there thinking to myself, how dare you say that? And that's what she said. Let me clarify. I was not paraphrasing. That's what she said word for word. I'm literally there thinking to myself, there's one, you know, other uni student behind me. And the poor woman had been waiting for this goddamn bus for 40 minutes and you're being that disrespectful. Shut up. So I flout, got out of my seat and sat opposite her because... F that Mitch, okay, that's what I say. Savage Cameron here sits opposite, six foot two frame, sits there and takes up all the room. I, I dabbed on her hard, showing off my right bicep that went. And then I was on the bus and she was so angry. She was livid. Your boy Cameron stood up, sit opposite her, do a hard dab. And then I'm on the bus opposite her for 40 minutes. She was not happy with that. We stand up, she gives me dirty looks, shut the whole goddamn bus ride. And I'm just there thinking to myself, okay, get a life. I'm reading my notes at my folder, so I'm taking up loads of room. I'm enjoying all the leg room because she's not flipping ho. And this other woman who was getting on the bus was able to sit next to this nice gent uh, who I was sitting with previously, who was a nice guy, very understandable of the situation. I did not care about anyone sitting next to him, which is how you should be on a bus. You know, if you're on a bus, you should not get angry if someone sits next to you or opposite you. Like, it's a goddamn bus. It's public transport, especially when you know for a fact that the bus is very full. You know, and they've probably waited a long time to get on this bus. When we got off this bus, I kid you not, she was a foot shorter than me. So she could not use the excuse of, oh, my legs are so long. No, you're just a problematic bitch. Okay, she was there wearing a little little party Halloween outfit. Oh, with the high-waisted jeans, keeping in that belly fat, bigging up that ass. And I'm just there thinking to myself, nah, fam, I'm sitting opposite you. And she dirty locked me throughout the whole bus ride. And her friends were like... I'm just there like, why are you opening your mouth? Do you want to suck my dick? <laughs> um, it's, it's okay, it's okay. I don't know what made me so angry about this whole uh, situation, but this girl, this girl, the attitude she displayed made me just want to do a left hook on her handbag. Okay guys, I'm getting this video here. I'm not advocating violence on girls. That is horrendous. So that's why I said handbag. No one take that out of context. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Smash like if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new today. How to Cameron is signing out.